Stayallday.com. Stay tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you're expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. On top of the fact, on top of the addition of the personal initiative, that is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including ourselves, to go, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is, we are continuing our ongoing uh, life-shattering, much-talked-about, often imitated, never duplicated series on how to be a wolf. Before we get into this, I remind you all of two things. First of all, my daily motivation and Monday motivation messages. Guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point to start your day, your week, respectively. Just be a member of my texting community. Once we reactivate and send those messages out again, you'll be getting them straight to your phone. My number is 305-384-6894. Send a text there. Secondly, work on your game university. You want to work with me directly. You already know that. You want to get access to all of our courses and trainings. You already know that. You know that there's a higher level that you want to be at and you're not there right now. You know that as well. I just told you three things you already know. Here's the thing you don't know. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com and let's get all those problems solved with me as your direct coach in the process. Again, that's workonyourgameuniversity.com. Getting into our topic here today, which again is we are on part seven of our ongoing series. It's going to be a 10-part series. So we got this one and then three more after that where I'm telling you all the things that all the attributes that you want to put in place so that you can start being a wolf because we all know to protect the sheep of the world, you got to become a wolf or you got to catch the wolves rather. And to catch a wolf, you need a wolf. You can't send a bunch of sheep out to go catch a wolf. You can't send a whole flock of sheep out to catch a wolf. All you're doing is sending those sheep out to be lunch for the wolf. So you got to be a wolf to catch a wolf. I'm telling you how to become a wolf in life, which means, again, being able to protect yourself from the other wolves that are out there to hunt the sheep if you decide that you want to hunt the sheep and just to make yourself a threat, make yourself a predator who goes out there aggressively attacks and kills what you want to eat so that you are not waiting around for someone to throw you a meal like a lion in the zoo behind a cage, but a wolf out in the open who goes and gets what you want when and how you want it. That's what we're talking about. Point number 19. Topic again is how to be a wolf. Survive the winter. Wolves, like all wild animals, have to survive the literal winter. The winter is often cold. Food may be harder to come by. And it is generally less physically comfortable in the winter than it is in any other season. Wolves have to not only survive, but they got to eat. They got to stay alive. They got to make sure their young are taken care of in the process of surviving as well. So they're not only taking care of themselves, they're taking care of others. And you, by the same token, you must also survive your winters, which may, may not necessarily be about cold weather. Winter, winter may just be a slow season in your business where the sales are not coming as easily Maybe you face an unexpected setback in your business. Maybe the people on your team are not delivering it the way that you want to. I was just on a conversation, as a matter of fact, today with an organization that I'm going to be doing some uh, training for. And they have probably about less than 100 people in their organization, but more than 10 in their organization. And the people in charge of that organization are telling me that they are having a really uh, bad month, the month in which I'm recording this. They're having a really bad month sales-wise. Because the people on their team are just not going the extra miles. Many of them are not even going the first mile to get things done. So in other words, this month has been a winter for this sales organization that I'm referring to right here. So a winter for you, again, may not be a full three months the way that seasons are in on earth. But your winter could be, your week could be a winter. Your month could be a winter. Some of you may have a winter for an entire year. You were making steady progress year after year after year. Then you have that one year that things are just terrible and you got to build back up. That happens, folks. And sometimes we refer to the winter as the third day. It's for a slightly different reason, but a similar concept. Your winter, again, it can be a slow season of business. It can be a gap of employment in between jobs. Maybe it's a period in which you're dealing with some personal issues, yet you still have to perform professionally and it's not as easy to do. Maybe a time when you are working somewhere or with someone and the situation is less than ideal for you, but you have to complete the job. All humans go through these winter seasons. Again, whether you know about them or not, when it comes to others, you know that you have. So to be more of a wolf, put yourself in a mind frame that you will find a way to get through the winters, especially for those of you who are going through a winter right now, because you got to deal with the winter because we know what comes after winter is spring and spring is Many people's favorite season. I know some people who love the fall, 
I know some people, if you're like me, you love the summer, especially down here in South Florida when it's 95 degrees and, and humid. Like sweat soon as you step outside humid. I like that kind of weather, but many people like the spring. Is it spring? Well, it's right after winter. So by law of contrast, it feels a lot better and different. The weather is starting to break depending on where you live, and where you get you know, full, the full experience of seasons. <coughs> For example, such as down here in Miami, Florida, we get winter. It technically is winter, but it doesn't, it's not the winter that many of you would picture. When you picture winter, I picture snow and cold. It doesn't snow here and it doesn't get cold. But we do have winter. But in other places where you experience the season, spring is a big contrast from winter. It's starting to get nicer outside. You can go outside and play. There are leaves on the trees all over again. The grass is growing again. You, again, you can see your flowers again. People can hang outside in the afternoons again. So you got to be able to get through the winter for one reason is that we know what's on the other side, which is spring. Another reason is if you don't make it through the winter, well, that means you die. And if you die, uh, you ain't going to see spring, summer, or fall, or even the next winter. So you got to make it. Point number 20. We're talking again today about how to be a wolf. And this is part seven of our series. Number 20, confront and engage threats. Wolves, unlike human beings, or all actually all wild animals, unlike human beings, do not have the luxury of rationalizing threats as if they are not threats. This is what humans do. All of us human beings have had a time or two or 10 in our lives when there was a clear and present threat in front of us. And we rationalized it as if it was not a clear and present threat. A clear and present threat could be something such as, hey, we're not hitting our sales numbers. It's two weeks into the month. If we don't do something about this, then we're going to get three and four weeks into the month and we're going to be way behind. And that's going to be a real bad situation. We rationalize it away as if it's not what it is. Now, see, a wild animal does not have that luxury. A wild, a wild rabbit who senses or smells that a wolf or a hawk or an eagle or whatever other animals eat rabbits is around and in its vicinity. The wild rabbit cannot rationalize, oh, it's not, I think I hear a wolf, but it's probably not a wolf. Let me just uh, eat a little bit more grass here. Let me, let me eat a little bit more of these uh, herbs and grasses and, and carrots because I don't th really think it's a wolf. That's just my, that's just my fear talking. Let me no, no, not talk down on my situation and make it seem like it's just okay. See, a rabbit does that becomes dinner. A human that does that can get away with it. Wild animals don't have this luxury. So if a wolf notices a threat in its environment and does nothing about it, then that threat may be the wolf's undoing. If a wolf thinks that there's a hunter around, it's about to shoot it in the head, and the wolf rationalizes that the hunter is not there at, and or that the hunter is not going to shoot the wolf in the head, then the wolf becomes a picture on Instagram laid, laid out amongst five other wolves who made the same mistake and they're all dead bodies for somebody's, I don't know what they do with those wolves after they kill them, whatever they do. All right, so wild animals like wolves cannot afford, they literally cannot afford to ignore threats. If a wolf just killed something for the first time in a week and it's starving puppies get to finally eat something and then a, another predator comes along and wants to steal that kill away from the wolf and also steal it away from those pup, pups who may end up dying if they don't get to enjoy that meal, the wolf cannot act like that threat's not happening because that threat is happening and that threat may come steal that kill if the wolf does not respond accordingly to the situation. Wolves can't afford to ignore threats. Humans, in our relatively safe worlds, we have the luxury of, again, rationalizing and acting like what is a threat is not a threat. Even when the threat is staring us right in the face and banging uh, two pots and pans against each other and we're acting like we don't hear it. See, you must, like a wolf, confront and engage threats immediately upon identification. You must confront and engage threats immediately upon identification. As with many things in this series, this will probably push against your human nature as we all have the ability to reason and rationalize, which allows us to tell stories that say a situation is one thing when it's actually another thing, or a situation is not threatening when it actually is threatening. And what this really does allow us to buy time, this ability to rationalize and tell ourselves stories and reason. This allows us to buy time to, again, put off action that we need to be taking right now, or it's not even a buy time. What we actually do is add time on, we add time on, on consignment kind of to a situation. We're not even buying time because we can't afford to buy time. What we're doing is adding time to a situation, basically adding to the balance owed that we haven't paid yet, basically adding to our debt. So just think about the U.S. government and its ongoing, ongoingly, increasingly uh, larger debt that the U.S. is running up. We are literally trillions of dollars in debt in the United States. We just keep adding money to the debt. 
that we already owe without any thought of, hey, is anybody going to do anything to stop this? Let's remember that we don't have that luxury. Okay, so if you go to the world website called usdebtcop.org, I believe it's usdebtcop.org. Let me check that number, that website, make sure I'm giving you all the right. It's us debt. Yes, usdebtcop.org. U.S. debt, D-E-B-T, clock, C-L-O-C-K, dot org. Right now, the U.S. national debt is $35,398,000,000, no, excuse me, yeah, trillion three hundred ninety-eight billion one hundred ninety-six million, and it's creeping up on $600,000, actually. While I'm talking, it's just past 600000 Now it's just past 700000 And while I'm talking right now, it's just past 800000 That's how fast we're adding to the debt. All right, that fast, now it's 900000 now it just went up to 197 million. Right, every, literally every minute, we're adding another million dollars to the U.S. debt. You don't have the luxury of continuing to, to borrow time the way the U.S. government borrows money. All right, you don't have that. So we got to deal with things immediately. Point number 21, we're talking here today about how to be a wolf, part seven of our ongoing series. Number 21, be willing, prepared, and able to lead. If a wolf is out on its own, it has no choice but to lead because you're by yourself. You have to lead and you got to survive or you're going to die. Your life is literally on the line. When a wolf is part of a pack, again, assuming that that wolf is, let's say, not the head wolf. You're part of the pack, but you're not the head of the pack. That wolf still needs to be prepared and ready to lead just in case something happens to the alpha wolf that's in charge. Because it may be, you may be called on to step up. It's the same thing with you. Even if you're not at the head of the table where you are right now, in your group. You should prepare as if you are at the head of the table because it only takes one moment for something to happen in which now you do need to be at the head of the table. The person who was in charge uh, is not there. Now you're expected to lead and you're expected to be prepared even though no one told you that the opportunity was coming. Again, if you're going to be a wolf of mind, ladies and gentlemen, the mindset of being a wolf is that you need to prepare as if you're the person in charge and you're the run, one running the show or as if you may get called on to run the show today, even though that call may not come. So you're prepared for something that may not happen, but you're never unprepared for something that does happen. Everybody caught that? You're prepared for something that may not happen, but you are never caught unprepared, or and rather, you are never caught unprepared for something that does happen. That's one of the hallmarks of a professional is preparation, preparedness, discipline, doing your homework. In football, for example, American football, that is, a backup quarterback has to, they know most of the time, especially if you're behind a superstar quarterback, you know that you're not scheduled to play at all in the next game. And you know that you might go the whole season not playing at all. And at the same time, you understand that you are only one play, one bad break, one twisted ankle, et cetera, away from needing to go and put your helmet on, go in the game, know the playbook, and be ready to lead the team to victory even though you came into the game as a second string person who wasn't going to play at all. <coughs> so you're prepared to play just in case the call comes while understanding that you may never get the call. And that's not an easy job to always prepare for something that may not even happen. Any of you who's worked in, any of you who's been in the military, you've done active military duty, and the country was maybe close to going to war where you would have seen active duty, you may have been in a situation where you were told by your leaders, hey, be ready because any day that call could come and we are going to active duty, but you never actually had to go in, but you had to be ready every day as if it was going to happen. That's a mental tax, not, not I mean, let alone rather the physical tax. And again, the football quarterback, they had to be ready just in case the call comes so that the call comes, you're ready. All right, understand one twisted ankle, one hard hit on the starter means that the backup needs to step in and be ready to perform immediately and no one will accept the excuse, well, hey, I was only the backup and I didn't play the last 10 games. Why should I have been expecting to play this game? Well, you're supposed to be expecting to play because you're a professional. So the backup has to prepare as if they're going to play in the whole game, even though they may not get any chances. You need to have that same level of discipline and preparedness for what you're doing or for the role that you want to be in, even though you are not being called today to step into that role, but you want to be ready anyway, just in case it happens. It's kind of like any of you knows anything about uh, film or theater productions that in theater productions, you have the person who is playing the main role of whatever character in a play. And then you have the understudy. The understudy is the person who is like the, the second stringer of that same role. So let's say if you were doing something like uh, Alice in Wonderland and you have the person who's playing Alice, who's the main character of the film production, or the theater production, 
you have someone who is the understudy to Alice. So she practices and prepares her lines the same way that the main Alice practices and prepares her lines, just in case the main Alice loses her voice or gets sick or gets stuck in traffic and can't make it to the show, the understudy can step in and perform the role at the exact same level with the exact same level of uh, delight and joy for the audience and nobody will even know the difference. You need to be that as a wolf. Let's recap today's class, which is part seven of our ongoing series, How to Be a Wolf, number 19, Survive the Winter. Wild animals have to survive the literal winter. It's cold, food may be hard to get by, come to come by, and it's generally less physically comfortable, but they understand, well, they generally, in their bones, understand that spring is on the other side of it. You may deal with some winters. It might be a bad season, bad month, bad year, bad quarter in your business. <coughs> maybe an unforeseen circumstance that lands in your lap. Maybe something happened in your personal world that is affecting your professional life, but you got to get through the winter. And if you don't, just like a wild animal, you die. Number 20, confront and engage threats. Wild animals cannot afford to act like a threat is not there. A, a, a mouse, a field mouse, can't act like there aren't owls sitting up there in the branches waiting to see a mouse ride by run by so the owl can swoop by and eat it. <coughs> Any mouse who acts like that's not a legitimate threat to his life ends up losing his life. You need to look at threats and challenges to your circumstance as what they are and not pretend like they're not there. Number 21, be willing, prepared, and able to lead. So even though you may not get the call to lead, you need to prepare as if the call is coming in two minutes for you to lead. You need to be prepared and ready to step into that role just in case that call comes the same way a backup quarterback is always prepared to play, even though they may never get a chance. Tomorrow, we'll go into part eight of this series. Make sure you go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Since you already know you want to take your game to the next level, you already know you're ready to step it up, and you already know you want me as your coach, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com, and let's get to it. Work on your game. Dre, all.